Welcome to Uncaged. Today we're speaking with Sarah Johnson. Sarah is the founder of Francis Strategies, which is a mission-driven firm that provides strategy consulting to federal and state government agencies, foundations, and other organizations in the workforce data ecosystem. Francis Strategies helps organizational leaders and executives develop strategy, measure what matters, leverage diverse data sources, and build capacity for data-informed decision-making, all with the greater purpose of unlocking opportunity and improving workers' lives. Sarah, we'll unpack all of that meaning of what you're working on in the workforce data strategy space. But before we get there, I know one thing about you, Sarah. I know that you went to Duke, so that's great. But tell us a little bit about you and your career. Well, thank you. Uh, well, as, as you mentioned, I'm the founder and principal at Francis Strategies. Um, and I, I really established uh, Francis Strategies to address a critical need uh, which is helping workforce uh, organizations harness data for meaningful impact. Uh, and my background includes 12 years at the U.S. Department of Labor, uh, where I served in senior strategy, data, and innovation roles. Um, and I was an early implementer of the Evidence Act, which is a federal law that set the framework for agencies to use data uh, for more informed decision making and strategic planning. Um, so that is the real thrust of my career. I've also uh, worked as a campaigner and appellate attorney uh, and various other things, um, but uh, a lot of focus on uh, helping improve workers' lives through straight strategy and data. That's amazing. And I tell you, now we live in a world where the word data probably has been said more in the last year than it was in the 50 years before this, everything seems to be fueled by more and more information and how do we build these kind of data-driven programs, data science, data insight solutions. Tell me a little bit more about the work that you and the Francis Strategies team does and how you use this information. Great. Uh, well, right now, uh, my main focus is on a State Department of Labor um, and I'm working with them to strengthen capabilities around strategic planning and data analytics. Uh, so these are areas where the agency is seeking to improve. And um, really what we're doing is trying to leverage all of the learning from other agencies and organizations have, that have walked this path um, to really accelerate their ability to innovate uh, within the agency. Um, so that, that is my main focus right now. And Sarah, I mean, what an interesting perspective you have, because, I mean, you spent a lot of time at the Department of Labor. So all of us out in the normal working world have been hanging on your every word and every data fact for years in terms of employees and employment, et cetera. But now it's certainly something that's evolving and moving forward. Where are we in terms of really kind of adding kind of the next level of insight, of kind of, I guess, granularity to that information that we have in general? I think that's a great question. And I think, you know, when you talked about the Department of Labor, I sort of heard you um, talking about the, the work of the Bureau of Labor Statistics, right, which is yeah. part of the DOL and puts out um, sort of the definitive labor market information for our country, and they play a really important role. Um, and I guess the work that I did uh, leveraged the work of BLS um, by using that information to help uh, inform programs uh, and, and drive um, their missions forward. Um, and also touched on the whole realm of federal administrative data, which I think people maybe think less about. So that's the data that uh, government programs collect and manage. Um, whether that's, you know, uh, when you're providing unemployment insurance, knowing who served uh, mm -hmm. or uh, workforce development programs, um, who's been trained and what are their outcomes or you know, minimum wage and overtime, you know, what workers were deprived of fair pay and how do we remedy that? All of that data is also um, collected by an agency like DOL. 
um, and can also be used um, for various purposes. So it's a really sort of broad picture of data that the governments sort of manage and, and leverage for their work. When you and others get together, Sarah, and think about where we can go with all of this, I'd say, publicly available data, or it's, uh, private and public data, I don't really know exactly how to describe that, but public sector data, what do you envision? I mean, what is the vision for how this can kind of help us shape the world going forward? Uh, you know, one one real challenge that we're facing as a country right now relates to workforce development and skills, right? So you have um, rapid you know, technological advancement, which is changing every day the skills that people need to do their jobs. Um, and how do we sort of anticipate those changes so that we can prepare a workforce um, through our educational system and through training? Um, how, how do we how do we see what occupations are going to be most prevalent and the skills that are needed um, in those occupations and then prepare the workforce to meet those needs. And so there's a whole um, a whole bunch of different data that that helps answer those questions, um, even more that we still need to 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 better answer those questions. Yeah, I can see trying to figure out how we structure those pathways. Now, now with all of this AI stuff happening, clearly that adds a whole nother wrinkle. And clearly I would imagine AI is one of these wonderful topics that comes up in terms of a tool that can help you analyze information. But I mean, how is that impacting the work that you and your colleagues do? You know, I think government overall is grappling how to use AI in a way that both, um, leverages the benefits, but also mitigates some of the risks. So the president just came out with an executive order yesterday. Yeah, I saw um, that. I saw that. And and so I think, you know, there are, there are big governance questions, but I, I think from my perspective, uh, we need to figure out how to take advantage of the opportunities of AI for public purposes, right? And really um, make sure that we're harnessing that power to solve big problems in society and, and use governance to do that. And I think the other piece is, is a lot of AI is, you know, is trained on data and, and, and government has been working to improve sort of the quality of, of the data that it produces and manages. And then, and then also the sort of accessibility and interoper interoperability of it. And so making sure that the data is ready for the AI um, is, is another, another issue. Yeah, I mean, I think the guidelines the president shared certainly is, I think, a great milestone for the conversation, and it will continue to evolve as we, I think, all get our heads around this space as it moves forward. But let me change gears a little bit, Sarah, and talk a little bit about your passion for what you do. I mean, over the last couple of years, we used to talk a lot more about you know, people and how the pandemic had shaped their lives. But we're not really trying to understand why people do what they do. And, you know, you clearly have worked in this labor space and worked with this data. What drives that passion? I think my connection to labor and workforce, it's such a common part of, of everyone's lives, right? Uh, I am a worker. Every, a lot of people we know are engaged yeah. in the labor economy. and um, making jobs safe and fairly paid and uh, just sort of meaningful and satisfying, um, I think, uh, has always been important to me. And, and um, I think now the my, my interest, I would say, has, has shifted some over time. I think um, initially I had really um, strong passion for social justice and fairness um, that fueled my interest in the field. And lately, uh, I've really been thinking a lot about lifelong learning and curiosity mm -hmm. and how that feeds into workforce development uh, and sort of the role of um, fear and and consciousness in, in helping people sort of become the, the fullest expression of themselves and how we use workforce development sort of to further that objective. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's a fascinating time to work in the area that you're focused on. I mean, I would say that if I had been asked in 2019, whether 
two thirds of my team would prefer to work at home versus working in an office, I would have probably laughed at you, right? I would have said that's impossible. No, but uh, certainly we've seen a massive shift in how people want to work. Certainly a massive shift in terms of the skills that they are applying and what is useful and what is expected on bringing a successful solution forward from businesses. But clearly there's more change on the horizon. And here we are at the end of 2023, looking into 2024. When you look out there, Sarah, what's on the horizon for you and the Francis Strategies team and for the marketplace in general? I mean, for Francis Strategies, we're still very much in a startup mode. Um, I sort of, it's only been a matter of months since I founded the company. So I think um, doing a lot of uh, things that startups do in terms of defining my service offerings and business development and um, sort of connecting with uh, a lot of people in this workforce data ecosystem and um, sort of finding, uh, you know, those problems that I'm really uh, best equipped to solve and and, and helping, helping organizations move forward. Um, I think... Uh, The themes that I really see in workforce development for 2024 are skills, skills, skills. Um, Everyone's very focused on skills, building a skills taxonomy, figuring out how to um, leverage data to predict workforce needs um, from an employer perspective and also from a a governmental perspective of preparing workers for the, the, the workforce needs of the future. Um, so those are some of the uh, topics that I think will be top of mind for folks. Well, I mean, 2024 will be really still year one of France's strategies. So it will be very, very exciting to see how the year evolves for sure. And clearly, there's going to be folks out there that are interested in learning more about France's strategies. Sarah, if someone wanted to chat with you, where's the best place to reach you? Uh, absolutely on our website, which is uh, francisstrategies.com. Uh, and there you can uh, read about some of the services that we offer and also uh, book a complimentary consultation if you're interested in exploring collaboration. Excellent. Yeah. Well, Sarah, thank you so much for being on Uncaged today. Uh, we've been speaking with Sarah Johnson. She is the founder and principal of Francis Strategies. And we've been talking a lot about how That workforce data ecosystem continues to evolve, continues to expand, having a huge impact on really kind of shaping the world that we're trying to build here. And clearly with new technologies like AI and all of the other things that we see from kind of a social shift in our society, there are new skills that are expected for all of us. And so hopefully that data that Sarah and her team can be pulling together will help us understand and build systems that will be more effective for folks going forward. Sarah, thank you so much for being on the Uncaged show today, and we look forward to having you back. Thank you. It was a pleasure. 